15th of September, 1860, was shot at in the main street of Mohill by James Murphy about half past one in the afternoon. The ball struck the house near me, and the splinters fell on me. James Murphy was arrested and committed. Murphy would go on to plead insanity, avoiding prosecution. His stated intention was to take satisfaction for the Earl's ruffianly conduct towards my wife. Murphy did not get his satisfaction, and the Earl of Leitrim survived. However, this was not the first attempt on the Earl's life, and it would not be the last. William Sidney Clemens became the third Earl of Leitrim in 1854, following the death of his father. Along with the title, he inherited almost 100,000 acres across Leitrim, Donegal, Galway and Kildare, including the expansive Lochran estate just outside Mohill. While many property owners at the time were absentee landlords, Clemens was anything but. He was overbearing and demanding, and was known for mistreating his tenants. He earned a reputation well beyond the reaches of Mohill as the Wicked Earl. One tale notes that he made an entire family homeless, because the smoke from their cottage ruined his view of the lake from Loch Rin Castle. This was the aftermath of the famine, but few tenants escaped his wrath. Speaking on his character, the Evening Star wrote that Clemens was cruel, relentless, remorseless. He paid no attention to the cry of strong men in their agony, and turned with impatient ejaculation from the whimpering of women and the sobbing of children. Lord Leitrim was supernatural in his inhumanity. Worse still were the rumours of the Earl's immorality towards daughters of tenants. Frank Hugh O'Donnell, the MP for Dungarvan, once declared in a House of Commons debate that the bad Earl carried on practices of debauchery by means of his power as a landlord, and, when his infamous advances had been slighted, he carried out his threat of eviction. James Murphy too, the Earl's failed assassin in Mohill, was adamant that Clemens had acted obscenely towards his wife. Following this and similar attempts on his life, Lord Leitrim started arming himself and took police escorts everywhere. But the Earl had made too many enemies, and eventually a bullet with his name on it would find him. The 2nd of April, 1878. Lord Leitrim left early on the morning of his final day on earth. In fact, he left earlier than he had intended to. The clocks in the house had been put forward, presumably to trick the Earl into leaving before his usual police escort had a chance to reach him. He set out from his house in North Donegal, Manor Vaughan, aiming to reach Milford by nine. He may not have had police, but he still had his two guns, and company in the shape of a coachman, Charles Buchanan, and a clerk, John Mackham. A second carriage driven by Michael Logue carried the Earl's valet, William Kincaid. It was an icy morning, with sleet showers sweeping in from Mulroy Bay. The men waiting in ambush along Clemens' route would have surely been chilled to their bones. They came from Fannet and had been waiting since seven o'clock, huddled by the side of the road, patiently listening for the sound of the Earl's carriage, Michael McElwee and Neil Shields. Their accomplice, Michael Herity, had gone to ensure that no passers-by could warn the authorities before they could do the deed. In the years since Lord Leitrim had been shot at in Mohill, tensions between the Earl and his tenants had only worsened. Recently, he had cast out several families during a cold snap. And now, rumours were abound that he was planning 80 evictions around Donegal. This, we can assume, is what drove those three Fanad men to action. The convoy came to a steep slope. The Earl's carriage went on, but the second car waited behind. The coachman, Logue, later said that he had to see to the horse. 
but perhaps he knew what awaited Clemens further along the road. All was still. The only sound to be heard was the approaching carriage and the softly falling sleet. Then, the first bullet sliced through Charles Buchanan's head, killing him instantly. Mackin was also shot in the head, but managed to stumble away from the scene. He died shortly after. Lord Leitrim's right elbow was fractured by one shot. He took several more bullets in his left shoulder. The horses threw the earl to the ground. He never got a chance to reach for either of his guns. The assassins approached his prone body, but he managed to get up and, despite the blood he'd lost, started wrestling McElwee. Some of the assassin's red beard was later found clutched in Clemens' fist. The struggle didn't last long. Shields had slammed his gun across the Earl's head with enough force to shatter the butt. The wicked Earl was dead. The assassins rode back across Mulroy Bay. The watchman, Herty, was later arrested but died in jail before he could be tried. McElwee and Shields were never arrested, despite the fact that there was little doubt in the locality who had carried out the deed, and despite the hefty £10,000 reward that the Clemens family offered for information. A memorial to the Fanout Patriots was erected in the 1960s. It thanked them for ending the tyranny of landlordism. Lord Leitrim was buried in St. Michael's Church in Dublin. As the funeral procession passed along the quays, angry crowds gathered to heckle and threatened to dump the coffin into the Liffey. Back in Leitrim, the people of Mohill were in mourning for a different local man, the clerk who had been caught in the crossfire, John Mackham. The entire town is said to have shut for the beautiful solemn burial service that he received. Clement's nephew Robert became the fourth Earl of Leitrim. He proved to be a popular landlord and reinstated many tenants whom his uncle had evicted. The year after Lord Leitrim's assassination, 1879, the land war broke out across Ireland. This would eventually lead to the breakup of large Irish estates. Today, Loch Rain is a luxury hotel, but the memory of the wicked Earl lives on, particularly in Leitrim and Donegal. Many songs and poems have been written about that fateful day in 1878, passed down through word of mouth. One ends thusly. The great exterminator, the lord of his estate, for him there was an inch of lead too hard to masticate. His body it lay lifeless on the road, I heard them say, to feed the dogs and hungry crows on the banks of Mulroy Bay.